The Board of Trustees for the Vancouver Island Regional Library welcomes you to the presentation of the approved 2016 to 2020 five-year financial plan. The current five-year financial plan focuses on how we will meet the service standards we have committed to in a financially sustainable manner. The Vancouver Island Regional Library faces three significant challenges in this respect. Communities where we do not yet meet the goals we have set for ourselves, communities that are growing and will need more service in the future, and communities with stable population numbers but aging facilities or equipment. The approved budget will ensure that we can meet these challenges without putting undue pressure on our financial resources. Budget decisions are made based on economic realities. The Vancouver Island Regional Library faces cost pressures as a result of the need to meet the cost of providing existing service levels and the need to maintain and rejuvenate our facilities. The Consumer Price Index measures the cost of living for the average household. Current consumer inflation for BC is 1% or 1.5% if energy prices are excluded. The Construction Cost Index represents the inflation rate for expenditures related to maintenance and construction. This gauge is relevant when considering the cost of capital projects. Current construction inflation is 2.1%. Wages represent more than half of our operating costs. Wage inflation is largely driven by the collective agreements with our unions. Recent data indicates current wage inflation in BC is in the 1.9 to 2.1% range. Based on these observations, a 2% increase in core expenditures is therefore not unreasonable. The Vancouver Island Regional Library is the fourth largest library system in BC, serving a population of 430,000 through 39 branches, a virtual branch and books by mail service each year circulating over a million items including books, magazines, CDs and DVDs. Although the cost of doing business has gradually increased, provincial funding levels have not. Continued provision of this vital service is therefore made possible largely with the support of our members. The cost of providing library services to our members are sh shared as required under the Library Act based on a 50-50 formula. 50% is allocated based on the converted value of land and improvements. The remaining 50% is allocated based on the population levels of our member municipality and electoral areas. 50% of our costs are allocated to our members using a value called converted assessment. Conversion is the process of applying a set, provincially regulated ratio to different types of property classes to arrive at a value on which to allocate costs. The use of converted assessment is required under the Library Act and is also used by regional and hospital districts to allocate their service costs to their members. The converted values for each of our member municipalities and regional district electoral areas are provided by BC Assessment on an annual basis. The 2016 to 2025 year financial plan was developed under the guidance of the strategic plan which consists of five strategic priorities. Verl is dedicated to developing its collection, enhancing access and building a maximum degree of diversity in the collection to provide the greatest choice possible for all customers. We are committed to fostering strong external and internal communications and promoting a broad awareness of the library and its diverse range of resources, services and programs. Our libraries will be welcoming places and community hubs for the informational, inspirational, cultural and recreational needs and interests of our customers and communities. We will optimize the use and benefits of technology to enhance the library experience for customers and develop library branches as learning facilities for information technology. We will have a supportive work environment that embraces a culture of continuous improvement and enables all staff to provide high quality, cost-effective service that meets customers' constant changing needs for library services. The levy can be broken down into three major components, core services, business cases and the facilities master plan. Core services represent the cost of maintaining existing levels of service. Increases to the core levy are therefore due to the need to meet inflationary pressures and do not represent significant changes to either staffing or service delivery. Business cases or new budget requests represent increases to service level. These are staff driven initiatives that are intended to address unmet customer needs. Facility levies were developed as part of the Consolidated Facility Master Plan. 2016 represents the sixth year in a 10-year program to sufficiently fund the replacement of existing furniture, fixtures and equipment, as well as the need for expanded and improved branches in some communities. 
increases to the core budget are driven by inflationary pressures. One of the most significant costs for Viral is wages. Looking forward to 2016, maintaining current staffing levels will require an additional $260,588 in order to meet our payroll needs, representing the single largest component of our operating cost drivers. Verl is committed to increasing our collections and in order to do this invest an additional 3% per year into library materials. Library materials are therefore the second largest cost driver for the 2016 budget at an additional $70,091. Other significant cost drivers include the need to offset declining investment and grant revenues as well as adjustments to the budget for servicing debt issues. Other operations and maintenance costs are, however, expected to decline by approximately $42,000, partly due to more staff time and resources being allocated to capital projects and less to ongoing maintenance as the condition of our facilities improve. A 2% increase in the core operational budget will allow us to maintain our current service levels. In terms of impact on total levy, this translates into an increase of $351,050 or 1.78% in the total levy for a core levy of $17,903,517. To put it another way, the cost of maintaining current service levels equates to an additional $0.82 cents per capita on average for a total cost of $41.84 per capita. Whereas the core levy represents the cost of maintaining existing service levels, business cases represent increases or improvements to service levels. This year, the board has approved three additional items or business cases for a total increase of $99,350 in the levy, or 0.51%. On a per capita basis, this represents an additional $0.23 cents on average per person. The three business cases that were approved this year were for the redesign of the website, a Welcome Back Week initiative, and Sunday openings for the Campbell River branch. The first of the approved business cases is for the redesign of the Verl website. The one-time cost of redesigning and updating the website will be approximately $55,000, representing a 0.28% increase in total levy, or $0.13 cents per capita. Welcome Back Week, a pilot initiative program to bring back library users in celebration of Canadian Library Month, has a cost of $30,000, representing a 0.15% increase in total levy, or an additional $0.07 cents per capita. The cost of changing the Campbell River branch's hours to accommodate Sunday openings will be approximately $14,350 a year, representing a 0.07% increase in levy, or $0.03 cents per person. Projected revenues for 2016 are $33,062,045. 20.37 million, or 61.62% of the total, consists of member levies, and 7.5 million, or 22.68%, proceeds from debt issues in relation to planned capital projects. 10.55% of total revenues, or 3.49 million, consists of transfers from reserves intended for capital projects, financing issue debt, or expanded branch operations. The remaining 5.14% of budgeted revenue comes from grants, overdue fees, investments and other income. The Vancouver Island Regional Library presents a balanced budget each year. Projected expenditures for 2016 are therefore the same as projected revenues. 37.99% or approximately $12.56 million of this goes towards the cost of wages and benefits for our existing workforce. The next largest expenditure category is capital representing 29.51% or $9.75 million in budgeted expenditures for 2016. Capital projects are funded by the issuance of debt or the use of reserves. Branch facility costs, the cost of maintaining and operating our branches on a daily basis, are budgeted at $3.31 million or 10% of the overall budget. Transfers to reserves for 2016 will be approximately $2.53 million or 7.65% of the budget. Verl is committed to increasing the library materials budget by 3% per year in order to maintain our collections. The library materials budget for 2016 will therefore be approximately $2.51 million, representing 7.6% of the overall budget. 
The remaining 7.25%, totaling $2.4 million, consists of funding to finance debt, administration, facility maintenance, and information technology. The five-year capital plan is the result of an annual review of the needs of the organization, bearing in mind there are competing constraints of financial reality and the need for facility upgrades. It is the end result of a process to prioritize the use of our resources by applying the following factors in accordance with the consolidated master plan. The percentage of populations served in compliance with our service standards, projected community growth, the physical condition and factors such as safety, additional costs and other factors such as the potential for ownership, partnerships and other real world factors. In 2010, based on a commission study of our facilities, the Vancouver Island Regional Library launched a 10-year plan to fund the rejuvenation, maintenance and expansion of our branches in order to meet our adopted service standards in a sustainable manner. 2016 represents the sixth year of this plan. Two specific levies were developed as a result of this plan, a levy to fund maintenance of existing furniture fixtures, equipment and systems, and a levy to fund infrastructure improvements and expansions. These levies were designed to take a progressive approach, being a slightly higher percentage of the previous levy in each of the 10 years before leveling off in year 10. For 2016, the first of these levies, the maintenance levy, will be 6% of the previous year's core levy. The second levy, for improvements to facilities, will be 7.5% of the previous year's core levy. The levy for furniture, fixtures, equipment and systems has been and continues to be successfully used to rejuvenate and improve our existing branches. Through this fund, Verl has been able to correct deferred maintenance issues, perform preventative maintenance, improve existing spaces and replace furniture, fixtures and equipment at various branches. The continuation of this funding is vital to ensure the sustainability of our facilities and to fulfill our pledge to ensure our branches will be welcoming places and community hubs. 2016 represents year 6 in our Consolidated Facilities Master Plan. Funding for the maintenance levy will be 6% of the previous year's core levy, resulting in a maintenance levy of $1,053,148. To put this into perspective, this is an increase of $119,230, or a 0.61% increase in total levy. For the average person within our service area, this equates to an increase of $0.28 cents per capita to $2.46. The second component of the Consolidated Facility Master Plan provides funding for the replacement and expansion of existing facilities where we are still seeking to meet our service goals. This funding allows us to meet those service standards, plan for and meet growing population needs, achieve direct ownership of facilities wherever possible to reduce long-term costs, and create community hubs for the informational, inspirational, cultural and recreational needs and interests of our customers and communities. In order to achieve this objective, the facilities levy for 2016 will be 7.5% of the previous year's core levy resulting in a facilities levy of $1,316,435. The impact of this on the total levy will be an increase of $149,037, or 0.76%, representing an increase of $0.35 cents per capita to $3.08 per person. The maintenance and facilities levies have allowed significant renovations to branches in the past and continue to be an important pillar of our plans to meet our current and future facility needs. The ability to achieve our five-year capital plan is heavily dependent on the continued availability of these funds. The financial plan is based on the need to meet our service standards whilst incorporating the need to keep costs in line. The approved budgets will allow us to move closer to these goals. In 2015, the total levy was $9,653,784. For 2016, there will be a total increase of 3.66%, or $718,667, bringing the 2016 levy to $20,372,450. Of this, 1.78%, or $351,050, represents the cost of maintaining existing service levels. 0.51%, or $99,350, represents new budget items that will increase service levels and customer experience. 
1.37% or $268,267 represents the cost to maintain our consolidated facility master plan in year 6 of our 10-year plan. In terms of the average person within our service area, this represents an increase of $1.68, bringing the cost of delivering library services to your area to approximately $47.61 per capita. Two thousand and sixteen will see an overall increase of three point six six per cent. This compares favorably to two thousand and fifteen and previous years as we reach a more sustainable level of funding. Vril continues to look internally for savings through greater efficiencies, which is reflected in the moderate increase in the levy for core services for two thousand and sixteen. The facilities master plan recognizes the differing needs of large and urban branches from those of smaller and rural communities. For this reason, the five-year capital plan has been separated. Here we can see the five-year capital plan for the large and urban branches, which contains the following information. The estimated timing, expected costs and funding sources for each project. A further breakdown of projects into renovations and or refurbishment projects versus projects for new and expanded branches. The five-year capital plan is a living document, allowing sufficient flexibility for projects to be rescheduled if circumstances require, but allocating resources based on priorities and within our ability to fund and manage projects. Similarly, the five-year capital plan for small and rural branches provides the estimated timing, costs and funding sources for those branches, once again separating renovations and refurbishment projects from projects intended to expand or create new branches. The facilities levy provides funding for the new and expanded branch reserve, from which funds are drawn in accordance with the five-year financial plan. These funds are intended for the construction or expansion of library branches. This graph represents the impact of the approved five-year capital plan on reserve balances. In order to fund expected projects over the next five years, there will be planned net drawdowns or contributions as follows. There will be drawdowns in 2016, 17 and 18, and 2019 will see a net contribution to the reserve, but by the end of 2020, the new and expanded reserve balance is expected to be a healthy $1.32 million. The long-term maintenance reserve, funded through the maintenance levy, will see planned drawdowns in 2016 and 2019, but net contributions in 2017, 2018 and 2020. By the end of 2020, the long-term maintenance reserve is expected to be a healthy $1.45 million. Each year, the board considers and evaluates requests for new business items that are presented by staff. Business cases are an essential way of examining our service levels each year and to continually strive to improve services to the public. The reason why they are presented separately from the core budget lies in their very nature. The core budget looks at the now and the costs of maintaining our current service levels. We continually look at ways to improve our service delivery, but the resulting budget is based on the premise that overall levels of service have not changed. Business cases go beyond the now. They look to the future and how we can improve our services. Because they are staff-driven and service-focused, the intent is to improve service at minimal cost. Many business cases are proposed, but those brought forward to the board are the ones with the highest cost-benefit to the organization. In order to ensure the board reviews only high-impact, action-ready plans, Verl has developed a lengthy review process. The development of proposals starts with ideas solicited from staff. A focus group further evaluates, revises, refines and recommends the best of these ideas to the executive leadership group, who in turn recommend a select few to the executive committee. The executive committee then either recommends or eliminates these suggestions for final review by the board. Each business case is evaluated based on a set of criteria designed to ensure that the board is only asked to review the highest quality submissions. The qualities we look for in a business case are the level of improvement to customer service, long-term sustainability, benefits to the organization as a whole, improvements to service levels, and suggestions that address important issues. The impact on the levy only reflects those business cases that have been approved above and beyond the funding required to maintain core services. Sometimes improvement to services can be achieved within our existing budgets. Some ideas show promise but aren't action ready. These items may need more refinement or research before they can be implemented and may come back to the board for consideration at a later date. Other items are worth considering but cannot be accommodated within the core budget. 
These items, if deemed worthy enough, are brought forward as new business items. For 2016, it was determined that two projects were achievable within the existing budget. The provision of free computer and internet access for visitors improves visitors' experience to our region and brings us in line with practices elsewhere. With a minimal impact of $6,000 on revenue, this project can be accommodated without an increase in levy. A pilot project to test playaway devices to provide better service for library users of all ages can be accommodated within the existing library materials budget. Some business cases showed promise but were not yet ready to be brought forward into an action plan and will therefore be considered at a future date. These include a digital literacy initiative, a review of our logistical system to enable us to improve circulation in terms of volume and speed, a more robust replacement program to increase customer experience, and a customer service librarian in Souk. Three business cases were approved by the Board for inclusion in the 2016 to 2020 financial plan. These include an upgrade and redesign of the website for a one-time cost of $55,000, a welcome back week pilot program to celebrate Canadian Library Month for a cost of $30,000, and the opening of the Campbell River Branch for four hours on Sundays for an annual cost of $14,350. Our website is often referred to as our 40th branch. It is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, is accessible to our entire service area and welcomes approximately 3,000 visitors a day. It is, however, end of life and needs upgrading. With the introduction of a new integrated library system in the fall of 2015, this is the perfect time to not only upgrade but rebrand and improve our website at the same time. The benefits are immediate and widespread. A redesigned website will provide a site that is more user-friendly and easier to navigate, an interface with our e-library and greater ability to promote our services, continued technical support once our current platform expires, and the opportunity to rebrand our site to keep up with changing customer needs. October is Canadian Library Month, and to celebrate the Vancouver Island Regional Library wants to welcome back every customer to their local library, including those with overdue fines and fees. As a pilot project, this initiative will reduce fines for bringing back overdue books to allow some of our vulnerable populations to enjoy our full services again. The pilot project will target customers who have not returned books because they simply cannot afford the fines. By reducing their fines, people who otherwise are shut out of this aspect of our service will be allowed to borrow again and will bring back books into circulation that otherwise may have been lost to the system forever. 2015 saw a refurbishment of the Campbell River branch. It has been our experience that newly renovated libraries enjoy an increase in business of 20 to 25%. Sunday is a very popular day for families to visit the library, but currently Campbell River is our only hub branch that is not open on a Sunday. The addition of these hours would maximize the board's investment and would be consistent with the operating hours of other hub branches. The approved 2016-2020 to financial plan has been prepared based on the need to meet our service standards. We continue to bring forward sustainable budgets, bearing in mind the need to be responsible and keep our increases down to a minimum. The Board feels that the approved five-year financial plan meets these goals whilst incorporating their ongoing commitment to the need to maintain and rejuvenate our library branches and meet or exceed the service levels the public desires.